in this next exercise, we're being given a graph of f of x and g of x, and our task is to figure out what that transformation was. So f of x is negative x squared minus 4x, and we're given a dashed graph of g of x. Let's take a look at the first graph. f of x is a parabola that opens down. f has a vertex of negative 2 comma 4, and it has x-intercepts of 0 comma 0 and negative 4 comma 0. g of x is also a parabola that opens down. It has a vertex of negative 2 comma 6, and the same x-intercepts of 0 comma 0 and negative 4 comma 0. So our question is, how did we transform f to get g? From the x-axis, so using that x-axis as a baseline, we've moved the graph out from that, which means we've done a stretch of the graph. And what have we done to make that stretch? Well, we had a y-value of 4, and now we have a y-value of 6. So what would I have to multiply by 4 to get 6? Well, multiplying by 2 would give me 8, that's too big. Multiplying by 1 would give me 4, that's too small. So let's try something in the middle, like 1.5. 4 times 1.5 would give me 6. And so this function, g of x, is simply 1.5 times f of x. Let's double check that we have that correct in Desmos. I'm going to plot the original function f of x, and the new function g of x equals 1.5 f of x. Here's my graph of f of x, and now I'll include the graph of g of x, and you can see that that's exactly what happened to the graph. g of x is 1.5 times f of x. Let's move on to the second graph. We still have the same graph of x, the parabola opening down with a vertex of negative 2 comma 4, and x-intercepts at 0 comma 0 and negative 4 comma 0 g of x is a parabola that opens down with a vertex at negative 2 comma 1 and the same x-intercepts at 0 comma 0 and negative 4 comma 0. Now what's happened in this transformation? Well, we haven't moved up, down, left, or right. What we've done is moved that vertex in towards the x-axis. And when we move it in towards the x-axis, we have a compression. We took the y-value of 4 and turned it into a y-value of 1. So what would I have to multiply by f of x to get that g of x? Well, if I multiplied 4 by 1 half, I would get 2, and that's not quite right. So how about we try multiplying f of x by 1 fourth? So g of x is 1 fourth f of x that should compress the y values by a factor of 4, or multiply them by 1 fourth. Notice this should have no effect on the x-intercepts because the x-intercepts have a y value of 0, and 1 fourth times 0 is still 0. Let's double check this one in Desmos. I've got my graph of f of x, that downward opening parabola, and I'm now I'm going to include the graph of g of x and g of x is that graph of f of x compressed by a factor of 4, or with the y values multiplied by 1 fourth. Just for practice, I'm going to write out the actual transformation for each of these functions. So for the first g of x, we had a transformation that was a stretch vertically by a factor of 1.5. For the second one, we would say that this is a compression vertically by a factor of 4. And if you don't like the fact that the 1 fourth and the 4 don't exactly match up, there is another way you could write this. You could say that this is a stretch vertically by a factor of 1 fourth. And then it does actually match up exactly. Okay, we've got one more thing to investigate as part of our vertical transformations. We're going back to that function, f of x equals the quantity x plus 2 in parentheses squared on the outside. This is a parabola with a vertex at negative 2 comma 0 that opens up through the points negative 1 comma 1 and negative 3 comma 1. What we're going to do is find g of x equals negative f of x. 
And so first, let's just write out what that is. It would be negative, and then the quantity x plus 2 in parentheses, and then squared. Let's take a look at what that does to the function in Desmos. I have f of x graphed over here in Desmos, and now I'm going to include the graph of g of x equals negative f of x, or g of x equals negative the quantity x plus 2, and then outside the parentheses squared. The result is a parabola that opens down instead. It still has the vertex, but now all of the points are reflected perfectly over the x-axis, like a wall calendar page flipping up and down. Let's go back to our notes and give that graph a try. So the point negative 2 comma 0 is on both f and the reflection of f, which was g. The point negative 1 comma 1 becomes the point negative 1 comma negative 1. The point negative 3 1 becomes the point negative 3 negative 1. So what we're doing is reflecting exactly the y values to be their negatives. So we had a y value at 0 4, now we have a y value at 0 comma negative 4. Hopefully you see the trend here. We're multiplying every y value by negative 1, to get a graph of g that opens down. So the effect of multiplying by negative 1 has the effect that we reflect f vertically over the x-axis. Now let's have you folks try one. We're going to let f of x equal the square root of, and then under the square root is x minus 3. This is given to you in a graph. It's a square root graph with an endpoint of 3 comma 0, going through the point 4 comma 1, increasing slowly as square root graphs do. I'd like you to graph h of x equals negative f of x, and then think about what effect that had. Pause the video and come back when you're finished. Okay, we're back. The first thing we want to do is write out what negative f of x would be. Since f of x is the square root of x minus 3 under the square root, negative f of x would be negative and then the square root of x minus 3. Let's take a look in Desmos and see what happens. I have the graph of f of x, that square root function in Desmos, and now I'm going to include the graph of h of x, which is negative square root of x minus 3 under the square root. What we see here is a perfect reflection over the x-axis of the square root function. So now instead of the square root function growing, from the point 3 comma 0. The square root function is decreasing from the point 3 comma 0. Going back to our notes, we can plot this new function h of x. We have a point at 3 comma 0. We have a point at 4 comma negative 1. And the square root function should be a perfect reflection decreasing. So the effect of multiplying by negative 1 or a negative is that we reflect f vertically over the x-axis. Just to recap, when we talk about vertical transformations, we're now including a set of transformations that are called stretches and compressions and reflections. That's this little section right here. Translations were up and down, and translations are a subset of transformations. If we multiply it by a number on the outside of the function, we get a stretch or a compression of the graph vertically. If we multiply on the outside by a negative or a negative 1, we get a reflection of the graph vertically. That's the wall calendar page that's flipping up and down.